Miss Nepal 2019. Uh, yes, I do have aspirations to bring the change and let others be the change. Because I think change starts from oneself and uh, change does not mean to bring a very drastic or a big change in a very single day. But I want, uh, I, since I am from a media background, I want to contribute my existence towards the media being. So, uh, why are you here? Mm, why am I here? It's my dream. And I'm into the nature and children's, so I want to improve the education system of uh, Pukra and I cannot uh, change the whole world, but I am Malay try to change I want to change the perception of people that education brings some changes and nature it should be conserved. So through the Miss Nepal, I want to improve the society through education and natural conservation as well. So I'm here. <laughs> so if you were crowned a Miss Intellectual show Miss Nepal, what would be the first thing you would do and why? If I was crowned Miss Intellectual, I would be very happy if I was crowned Miss Intellectual. I would uh, definitely focus on my beauty with the purpose project and I would uh, keep, uh, I would see like, let's say I'm sure we get sponsored also from this intellectual as well obviously that will be a very big benefit for me if I win Miss Intellectual. It's a very, one of the most important subtitles. So I would use it directly or indirectly in my Beauty with the Purpose project. So if there was one person you admire, uh, who would that be and why? Any person? Yeah, any person. If there's one person uh, that I admire, I would take um, Helen Keller's name. Because after um, learning about her story, and after knowing her, I think she's such a great personality. She's a, she, um, despite having her um, life in such an overwhelming odds in her life, she managed to prove that she was actually differently abled, right? And she also became the symbol of courage to so many people like her, as well as people who are not like her. So I believe that I admire her a lot because of that. Okay. 
Okay. You know, Tesla Motors has done so well, and uh, the power of the vehicle is really admired all over the world. I, w I wanna. I wanna, <laughs> I wanna try Tesla Model S, Tesla Model 10 because it's kind of like a dream. Uh, you know, uh, in the 21st century, uh, there are certain skills that one needs to possess. What are the skills that you think you possess? I think um, being resourceful and leadership are two very important skills. One needs to know that one has 24 hours in the day and one needs to be able to delegate, one needs to be able to select a good core team and to be able to lead and manage a good team. Maybe not always from the front, but to be able to take a, take a team with you to create the best possible impact. You might not always be the best in everything that you do, but you need to be able to collate a team and be very resourceful. So I think those two skills and of course people management. People management is I think a very important skill because that is one thing probably that the machines can't do for us. So what is the difference that you find between a fashion show and taking part in a pageant like what you do? Well, uh, if I am a model, then I focus on what I'm wearing and how I present myself. But uh, if I'm in a pageant, then I focus completely upon myself, how I improve uh, learn how I improve my speaking skills to how I present myself, how I speak to somebody, new people and um, yeah, basically it's about how you grow as a person but if you're a model then you have to present some other people's work. Yeah. So uh, can you share with us uh, an incident that happened to you that's changed the way you look at things? Of course, the recent incident. Mm -hmm. I think you all know that uh, I went viral. Sorry? I went on, uh, the, my interview went viral. Oh, it was you. Okay. Uh, yes, that was me. Uh, that has changed me, like, uh, how to be confident and how to tackle media. As I was new to the media field, I was new to facing camera, I was new to everything. But then suddenly I went viral and it was uh, hard to take. It was hard to believe that I was on everybody's uh, phone. And everyone was tag tagging me in uh, videos, phones. But uh, it has helped me to build up the courage mm -hmm. and to meet up people and to face the consequence or to face the fame, a little mm -hmm. amount of fame at least, uh, to take over and be more confident. I have learned that you have to be more, I was confident then, mm -hmm. but I have to be confident more uh, in makeup as well. Because I was comfortable in my own skin, right? But mm -hmm. now I'm comfortable with makeup as well. And I learned that uh, overnight fame or overnight success is hard to handle, mm -hmm. but uh, we have to handle it carefully and we have to take it more confidently. And yes, uh, media, we have to take media seriously. <laughs> What does Kiran mean to you? Kiran is a ray of light. Yeah. yeah. What implication does it have in your life? The ray that it, I mean the ray, I think it's the ray that I'm flashing here. Kiran is ray, but yes. what implication does that ray have in your life? Uh, ray. I think... So what is your aspirations? What do you really want? I want to be win this title that's for that's my goal and another thing is I want to do something in my country as an architect as architect and relating to this beauty pageant as if I win this title I will have that power as government is not doing anything for the buildings that is not constructed I want to be the part I want to take the lead to do something for my country that is what I aspire okay. So uh, if you had a, an opportunity to have dinner with somebody, mm -hmm. who would that be and what would you discuss with a person? Uh, if I had the opportunity to have dinner with someone, it would definitely be with um, Barack Obama. I think he's one of the most influential personality. Mm -hmm. And with Margaret Chan as well. She's the World Health Organization director head. Um, and I would love to have dinner with them and discuss about how we could make health a public resource for everyone around the globe, not just in first developed countries, but also in third world countries, where health is a basic right and every human being is able to access health and optimum health. On a different context altogether, uh, you know, there is elections going on in India. Uh, what is your view on uh, Modi, uh, Prime Minister Modi becoming Prime Minister again? Um, so, as far as I know, uh, Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India, he's a very good Prime Minister because we have seen the level he was, he was, and now where is he? It has 
really helped India to be India. It has de India has developed a lot, and I think if he is doing his work very uh, perfectly, if he is de uh, contributing towards his country, uh, then I think being prime minister once again would be really beneficial for India, as we have seen his work, and he is really uh, very hardworking, and he is really focused towards contributing in any way, be, be it uh, economically, economical status of India. Uh, or have building a relation with international with other countries he's really focused hard working and is very out there for the contribution to uh, his country so i believe if that works and if it helps in the development of country then why not okay so if you were to me as intellectual what would be the uh, uh, one thing wow. that you want champion um so we 25 people, we were selected from the whole nation. So that alone itself is a great thing for me. And to be selected as Miss Intellectual from this 25 group, I think it's a big opportunity for me to present myself in my career. Um, it will give me a validated point to prove myself as a person who can be a leader. So I think it will really help me do future project works and my, for my career as well. So why I feel like mindfulness and meditation should be introduced in school is because uh, we read about a lot of things like science and maths. Most of us, I've forgotten all the science I've read, okay, all the maths I've read, most of it. But then these things like mindfulness and meditation, these things are important for every human being, right? And like the practice of gratitude, the practice of compassion, we all need this because we have so much complaints in our life, right? And if we ask people, tell me three you're grateful about. I feel like people will take a lot of time to think about it because we're not focused on that. We're more, more focused on things that we don't have. So, um, so I believe that we need to inculcate those characters on our kids so that they can have a better tomorrow. So what's the biggest challenge you have faced in your life? In my life? The biggest challenge that I faced in my life is I lost my brother three years back and I wasn't in Nepal. I was uh, I went to my, uh, I went with my friends. Uh, it was a college tour. I was in India, and uh, it was just three days. Uh, I've been there, and uh, I I don't remember laughing that much in my entire life. I, I laughed so much that day. I didn't know what was coming right after that. Uh, I. I didn't, I didn't get the message also at that time because we were all in Water Kingdom and I only got to know about this incident when I get back and the fact that I wasn't carrying my citizenship so I couldn't fly right away to my home to my parents, it, it still sook, sook me, shakes me because I couldn't be there and uh, yeah, that's the biggest challenge because I couldn't be there when my family needed me the most. So sorry to hear that. So uh, how has that impacted you? I have one thing I've learned from that is that time waits for no one. The incidents happen, things happen, big things happen, small things happen and terrible things happen but it, it won't wait for anyone. You have to go with the flow or if you get stuck within the situation it's only gonna get worse. That's the biggest lesson I've learned from that incident. So who is an inspiration for you and why? Okay, um, it may sound cliche, but it is true. My mother is one of my biggest inspiration. And I think everyone should make their mom as inspiration because they have done so much for us. Apart from her, if I need to tell someone name, then it will be Malala Yousafzai. And I think not only me, but a lot of youth. And I think not only youth, every, each and every person should, inspi should get inspired from her because she is such an incredible personality. She had done so much thing for the girls, especially in the field of education. And I consider myself privileged to be to get an education, to go to the school and learn so much because uh, not other than me there are so many girls who are not getting the freedom to get the education which is our basic human right to be educated and I think she has done such an incredible job and we all should learn from her and I, I like one quote she um, is said uh, by Malala that education is the most sorry it is if we do not speak up then there will no one speaking up for us so it is up to us to speak up and raise our voice so yeah
I really admire her. You said you are bullied, so, you know, like how, how were you bullied? Just because of the color of your skin? Yeah, because uh, in my class, they were the very fair girls and even even the teacher were inclined towards the fair girls as the beautiful girls and my friends also did not care about me okay. they, they just did not want to be friends with me because i was not beautiful according to them okay. so it was very hard for me okay. so you don't have that dark skin <laughs> but they consider it <laughs> Okay. Was calling name also something that was prevalent? Yeah, the names like Kali, Neeli, Neel Kamal. There were a lot of names. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you done well. <laughs> you done well. You did the right thing. Want to just focus on? Everybody talks about the, the uh, America American. being the land of uh, thousand opportunities, right? And the American dream, right? So, what is your take on that? Oh, uh, okay. Thank you. Um, American dream basically what they say is it's to have a house to have a good job and which I already have in Nepal so um, I don't think I will have to make a home or house in a, in a foreign country and about the job um, I was actually an intern I was I used to work as a tax intern in um, United States yeah for for me American dream I do not uh, go with that Dream okay. with that mentality okay. because I, I feel like it's li it's more materialistic mm -hmm. because in America success is measured in terms of wealth where mm -hmm. here we measure in terms of satisfaction and happiness and family bonding so, mm -hmm. so you mentioned autism what are the other different uh, you know we see a child very normal but there are a lot of uh, problems inside you know mentally or you know uh, that's something that we don't see are you aware of other, other uh, that's what I'm saying yeah disabilities uh, like Down syndrome that um, you might be talking about yeah. Down syndrome and autism Down syndrome I don't uh, know about uh, that particular area but what I feel is Down syndrome is particularly uh, we have to care them we have to care them and they can interact no, as I mean well say, uh, apart from autism and Down syndrome what are the other uh, areas of learning disabilities that a child may have child may have okay uh, there might be some children might have depressions mm -hmm. because of uh, family backgrounds mm -hmm. and all or might be what it might have be? you heard of dyslexia dyslexia yes uh, quite not not okay yes. never mind that's it uh. fine anything else okay uh, you know february 14th is known for what Mm, you have 14 numbers, so February 14th is not for what? Valentine's Day. Okay, can you tell us about Valentine's Day? <laughs> it's about love. Mm. Let me just portray this word love because it will just depict. Normally, like, love is not something of like that um, relationship between only girlfriend and boyfriend, but having someone in your life with whom you have blind faith. That even if you hurt them to the extreme, they'll still hold a hand and say, I was, I am, and I'll always be there. I think that's love. And that is the day to depict this whole thing, not only with your girlfriend or boyfriend, but with your families, with your relatives, with your friends. Like ce celebrating the day of love, I think, is Valentine's Day. So how do you take the uh, losing and winning the crown? Okay. <laughs> No, that is a very tough question. Like when I came here, I thought no. The focus when we analyze it as a public, I thought winning the crown is very important. Else you stand nowhere. I came here with that mindset. I, though I was not even sure I'll get selected, but if I get selected, I have to win. That was the mindset I had. Mm -hmm. But when I came here, then it changed my perspective. It's like I have grown so much as a person when I came here. I was very nervous to talk in front of people, now I can. If I have very strong opinions about something and there's even someone who disagrees with it, I can calmly present my point of view, respecting theirs. And ma'am, another thing is, like, I've learned that I too can play sports. <laughs> I am someone who has never touched a ball entire life, okay? So, like, we had a sports day event and I had no choice but to be there. I, it was not a school sports event so I could not skip it and I had to be there and we had a game short put. It was a 5 kg ball and we had to pick it up and we had to throw it. If, it would, if I would be somewhere else I would find an excuse to not be there but then 
I did it, and I'm really proud of myself for that. So yeah, winning and losing. Yes, winning is important, but I want to polish myself throughout the journey, and that's how I want to win the crown. So what's your passion of your life? Passion, passion of my life. I want to be all, phil I want to in involve myself into philanthropic act. That would be my passion for now, but not now, but later on. And passion for me is now in Nepal. Mm. <laughs> so when you say philanthropic work, that's a wide area, right? Where specifically you want to focus on? Excuse me, sir, I did not get the question. Like social service, you are talking about social service. Yeah, yeah. There's a wide range of social service that you could do. Yeah. So is there any specific uh, sector that you've been thinking of Thank where you. you could help? Health is a basic fundamental right that everybody should be provided with, with, but half of the population of Nepal are not getting that. So I want to involve myself to make everybody accessible to at least basic fundamental health. Right. That's so what is the biggest challenge you have faced in your life and how do you overcome from that situation? Like there are a lot of challenges, but the biggest one was like, I, I was really like, I was a happy-go-lucky kid, like I was always jolly and I would really talkative and stuff and I always believed in God like I was I was a very big God believer I would always talk to God all the time like self-talk but what happened is five years ago my uh, brother he died of cancer so he had uh, leukemia so he was just 16 15 16 so what happened is uh, like I used to be a very like bad sister so when he died like I felt really guilty so I would I would always blame myself and really depressed after that and I started engineering then but I couldn't focus on my studies and stuff so it was really a hard moment for me but but then I opened the foundation in his name and we worked for cancer victims my mom and me because I was doing it but I wasn't I'm not very publicly active like in social media and stuff so it was really hard to like gather people in my cause like I was like really reluctant to show up uh, to people or talk to them and then I wanted to do so much for the community and it was really difficult because I wasn't being heard like my parents and my family were supporting me but I wasn't having a public support so then I thought I should go to Miss Nepal if I want to win Beauty with Purpose then I get a lot of audience I get a lot of platform where people will hear me and so I said that I'm not a very like PhD person I'm a very big geek like even like everybody teases me like they are such a tomboy what are you doing in Miss Nepal like like I'm not a typical Miss Nepal person like even my co cousins and everyone's shocked that I'm here so since you are a sporty person yes. how do you take the losing the king losing the game uh, I have lost a lot of games of course mm -hmm. uh, in the process of uh, being there uh, I have not been selected once and it was also a loss for me but I think uh, it is a chance for me to learn even more I know that I'm lacking something and I'm I'm going to have to work on something I think that is all and I, and it's uh, really great losing is not about uh, being sad it's not about uh, it's not that we are bad we are lacking uh, lacking too much it's that someone is better than us I think uh, we should appreciate that we should take something positive from them and we should learn and improve ourselves on that aspect when you say fast intellect you know, fast knowledge knowledge, knowledge, knowledge that I have so how do you define intellectual a person being intellectual well intellectual is for me um, I think it's different for everyone because everyone here is from different uh, sectors. So everyone has different types of knowledge in their own sector and that plus having proper knowledge about your surroundings and the culture and everything you've been brought up to, that's, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So your transition from Ratha Bangla being a very formal school to Ace being a very liberal school and then going to another formal setup doing the Can you tell us your transitions? Well, was indeed a very, oh my God, I cannot even express that in my words because it was such a great exposure for me. I gained my uh, overall confidence and I came to know about my personality from Ratha Bangla because it's such a great school, the environment, the, the, you know, the kind of the, the kind of healthy competition that they have, you know. Uh, what I learned in four years of my BBA, I had already learned 50 or eight, 50 to 80 percent in Ratha Mangla itself. So that helped me, you know. That helped me a lot. And in ACE, I was very, I was everywhere. I was.